Today on Otaku Lucifer, we're going to be talking about Cowboy Bebop, the live action series on Netflix. I think it's time to blow this Let's go. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, it's jam. If you've liked my content before, please go down and smash that like button and subscribe. I am a huge Cowboy Bebop fan. So going into this series, I was excited. I, I was extremely excited. And in all honesty, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I really, unlike a lot of people, I really enjoyed it. I did. Um, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I didn't love it, but I liked it. And I understood why they took uh, certain creative licenses uh, when dealing with the characters for this series. That being said, <laughs> um, Cowboy Bebop, the live action series, is literally like that family member that you love, but you don't always like, right? The biggest pro that I saw, or one of the pros that I saw, was that I actually liked their choices for the live action versions of the main characters in Spike Spiegel done by uh, John Cho, uh, Jet Black done by Mustafa Shakir, and Faye Valentine done by Daniela Pineda. I think they were all great choices. Um, they didn't necessarily look like the characters, but I believe they embodied the characters fully. Uh, I, I thought they were great choices. So that was one of the big things, one of the big takeaways for me for the series was the fact that you had these, these uh, characters or these people who may not actually look exactly like the anime characters, but come on, it's anime. Um, it's, you're, you're pretty hard pressed to find someone who looks exactly like an anime character. But people who embodied the intent of the characters or who embodied the personalities of the characters. I thought they did a great job with that. I thought the visuals, stunning. Visually, Cowboy Bebop is beautiful, especially when they go into stuff like uh, showing you the gateways uh, from the series where it showed interstellar travel through this system called the gateways. I love the way they did that. I love the way they showed the short swordfish. I love the way that they showed the bebop. The bebop looked beautiful. I, I personally thought that Daniela Pineda as Faye Valentine was actually the best choice and the best acted out of the three. A lot of people got down on her for playing Faye. I personally believe that she exemplified the character of Faye Valentine, whereas at points, John Cho and Mustafa Shakir, they kind of lacked when playing Spike Spiegel and Jet Black, respectively. I think for the most part, Daniela Pineda was like spot on on who Faye was as a character, even in the anime. The only difference is Faye was in the anime was a bit of an over-sexualized character. I think Daniela came in and she kind of fleshed out a lot of that and she made her more human and more understandable. If you ever saw the episode Speak Like a Child, where Faye goes on a mission to find out who she really is, in that episode, that's the episode in the original series that brought some type of humanity to the character of Faye. Because before that episode, and mind you, that episode was like near the end, I think it was like episode 23 or 24, it brought some type of humanity to the character. What I liked with Daniela Pineda's version of Faye was that she did that immediately without having to get to that episode. I think Daniela's personality or the personality that she brought to the character really made the character of Faye. And I, for me, uh, Faye was the standout character in the series, to be honest. Uh, I, I really loved the way that, that she just interacted with everyone she came across. So for me personally, you know, having Daniela Pineda play that part and play that role and just kind of flesh out Faye Valentine as, as a three-dimensional character was awesome. Because before episode 24 or before the episode of Speak Like a Child in the anime, to me, Faye was a straight two-dimensional character and she had stayed that way until that episode. Daniela did a great job in, in fleshing out uh, Faye's, Faye's personality and creating a, a, a 3D heroine. Um, that I really enjoyed watching on screen. Uh, now, John Cho <laughs> and Mustafa Shakir. <laughs> oh, man. Um, where do I start with those guys? 
I also enjoyed the character of Woody, uh, who was kind of like a semi love interest, um, semi um, informer or informant. Um, where like she had all the information in, in, in the episodes and she was you know she was highly attracted to, to Jet and you know for information instead of pay she always wanted some type of dinner date or a sexual favor or something like that I thought that was just kind of like a cool spin into Jet Black's personal life and his background and his backstory um, so you know the world building aspect that included Woody was really good I actually liked the pacing of each episode um the to me the series was really really good until it got like to like the last two or three episodes and then i was just like what the fuck just happened right but before those three episodes before the last two or three episodes to me it was really really good one of the reasons was because of the pacing of each episode you know each episode was about 45 to 50 minutes long there's a lot of time that you have invested into each episode. Having episodes where they pace it out and everything is kind of fleshed out for you was really good for me. Um, I really hate any type of series, especially live action shows where it's not well paced out. And this, the pacing in this to me was, was excellent until, again, the last two or three episodes. I really like them filling in gaps from the original series with this. Now, even though this series was not a blow by blow exact uh, replica of the original series I still feel that it was very good and it filled in a lot of gaps that were left from the original series the problem with the original series to me was that there were just so many like plot holes in it and you kind of had to sit back and kind of figure things out for example the relationship between Vicious and Spike and the love triangle between Vicious Spike and, and Julia, right? That was always a question in people's minds. People knew from the subtext uh, within the series, from the original series, that there was something going on between Vicious Spike and Julia, and it was some type of love triangle. They filled in the gaps there with that. I might not necessarily like the way they did it, but at least they did it. But the thing that concerned me the most was them filling in the, the gap of how did Spike and Vicious meet and what were their actual relationship? Were they really brothers or were they just partners in the syndicate? And what you find out from the series is that they were both in a way. So stuff like that I really enjoyed. Um, I even enjoyed, uh, they, they added a new member or a new character called the eunuch that I really enjoyed his presence. One more thing that I liked about this series was they would take uh, specific scenes uh, straight out of the original anime and they put it into the show. Scenes like when Spike fought P.O. LeFou, where and it was called P.O. LeFou in the original um, in the original series, and Spike was fighting the guy, and there's a scene where like it cuts to like the shadows, and you see Spike getting his butt kicked and getting flipped around and flopped around in the air. They had an exact blow by blow uh, scene in the live action series which was amazing to me so things like that i enjoyed also if you ever saw the episode uh ballad of the fallen angels uh where spike and vicious fight each other in front of that big glass window stained glass window from the church and vicious is standing over spike with his sword at, at spike's shoulder and, sh and spike and spike is pointing his pistol at vicious's uh shoulder and you know grinning and then Vicious has like this awesome monologue, right? They literally did the same thing, blow, blow by blow almost, and they took the exact same speech from the anime and put it in the live action. So stuff like that, I really enjoyed. <laughs> Things that I hated. Um, speaking of Vicious. Speaking of Vicious. Um, Malfoy, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> because Vicious looked like Malfoy from Harry Potter. I mean, straight up, Mal like, I can't be the only one who saw it, dude. Like, it, ca it can't just be me. He looked like Malfoy, or, or Malfoy's dad, if I have my Harry Potter straight. But yeah, like, I, I, I did not like their choice for, for Vicious. I didn't like him at all. I didn't think he embodied the character at all. 
I didn't like what they did with the character of Vicious. To me, Vicious is one of the best antagonists in anime um, that never really got his shine. You know, he was he was literally in several episodes for probably a, a total of like 20 minutes, if that. And I think that this could have been an opportunity for them to kind of show him in the light that he should have been shown in and give him more of a presence within the whole series. Um, a presence he really didn't have in the original series. So I personally wish that they had done more with the character. And what they did with the character I felt was horrible. I think they turned him into a sniveling, whiny little pissant. Whereas within the anime, he was someone to be feared. And rightly so, because he plotted a coup and he took over the syndicate. I, I think what they did in this series where they went and they fleshed out how he plotted the coup and who his co-conspirators were with the, in the coup, which was, which were the eunuch and Mao. But I didn't like what they did with Mao either, right? I didn't mind the fact that they had Mao in it, right? I just wish that Mao, Mao, Mao Yin Rai, Mao Lin Rai, Mao Yin Rai, I think, Mao Tai Jin, right? I think Mao Tai Jin, um, I think they should have kept him as a man. That's just my personal opinion. You don't have to like it, it's fine. But I think that the character of Mao, for his small presence, because he had even less of a presence in the original series than Vicious did. He was literally in, in the original series for about two to three minutes and then he died. But I think this was an opportunity to flesh him out as well. And what they did is they turned Mao into a woman. I don't know why, I, I thought that sucked. I thought it was stupid. And they had the eunuch, which I thought was a good addition, but I don't know. It just didn't balance out to me. So that coupled with the fact that I didn't already didn't like Vicious or I didn't like the actor for Vicious and the way they, they, they switched up the character of Vicious, I really hated it because, again, it was the, the chance to make him a more powerful antagonist um, in the series. And they, I think they failed in, in that attempt. Uh, if they even attempted that. Um, now, I didn't like the fact that they changed Mao into a woman, but the woman who played Mao, I thought was excellent in the role. I thought she was awesome. <laughs> I thought she was badass, to be honest. So them doing that with, with Mao really didn't upset me as much as it did with, with, with Vicious. Because um, with Mao, at least Mao, she had gravitas and she had a presence to her. The person who played Mao was awesome. So I, I really didn't mind he did it. the same thing with Ren. Um, he no, looks nothing like the character from the series, which was fine. I actually liked the person who acted as Ren uh, because I, I felt that he brought a, a, a different perspective. Yeah, I thought he was excellent at, at playing the character. I just didn't like, my only gripe with, with the character of Ren is that he didn't look like Ren. Um, you know, that was it, you know, instead of a blonde guy with short hair, short blonde hair, it should have been, you know, give him a, a, a long black wig and tie it to the back and call it a day, but they didn't do that. So it's okay. Um, but the person who played Grin was awesome in, in the role. I thought he was, I thought he was great. It was, it wasn't like something big overall that was bad about the series. In my opinion, it was like the little, little things that built up to like a mountain from a molehill because they didn't just address minor things. Like, for example, calling the character Annie, Anna. The woman who played her as well, she's a brilliant actress as well. She's been in a lot of stuff. The, the, the fact that these characters were, were being played by high caliber people, like high caliber actors, I think saved the series, in my opinion, um, from Death by a Thousand Cuts, right? I think the fact that you had the changes, the small little changes with the names like Anna and Annie and the look of Grin, even with, with uh, Lin and Shin, right? The twins. Um, in, the ser in this series, they made one male, they made the other one female, and then they, they really didn't look anything alike um, besides ha having the name Lin and Shin. Now, the other thing I hated, besides what they did to, to, to Vicious, I hated what they did with, with Jet. 
I have no problem with Mustafa Shakir uh, playing Jet Black. A lot of people didn't understand that it was hinted that Jet Black, the character, was a black man. <laughs> and if they didn't notice it, I don't know what to tell people. There's a lot of people mad that there's a black man playing Jet Black, but if you ever saw the series, um, Jet wasn't white. So what are you mad about? <laughs> and it is literally hinted that he might be a black man or he's a man of color off of the fact that he loves blues, um, his swagger, his name was Jet Black. When they made the American dub uh, or the English dub, the man playing Jet Black was a black man from the South. Like, wake up and smell the bebop, people. Like, Jet Black is black. <laughs> black. But the thing that pissed me off was, was the fact that um, I loved Mustafa Shakir's uh, portrayal of Jet Black. I thought he was brilliant in, in, in the role with what they gave him. But I didn't like what the writers did to the character of Jet. Like, to, to me, they kind of, like, they emasculated him. That's what I felt. I felt they emasculated the character of Jet Black. Because for someone who was a former detective, former cop, right, who was on the beat, he had, like, total trust in partners without vetting them. And if you didn't know anything about the original series, you know he, in the episode, I think, called uh, Black Dog Strut, he got, he was betrayed by his partner. Um, and you know, they have a, a, a correlating episode in the live action where the same thing happens and they show him, um, being betrayed by his partner and that's how he got his metal arm, but it continued with Spike, you know, long after that happened, it continued with Spike and they made Jet Black come off like a character who is not just down on his luck. But he's in a place where he, it's, 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 a, it's a situation of his own making. It's, it's kind of depressing, you know? The, the, the character of Jet was just depressing. I personally didn't like what they did to the character. Um, although I liked the way the actor who played Jet Black portrayed the character. Um, I thought it was more like a writing thing when it came to the character. Now getting to John Cho. I think John Cho was really good. I think everybody was really good up until those last three episodes. I gave Faye or Daniela Pineda um, her props because throughout the entire series, she was who she was and she was consistent with that. Unlike with Spike and Jet, played by Mustafa and, and, and John, um, I think John did a really good job again. He's, a, he's an A-list uh, actor in my opinion. He's a high caliber actor. If you don't know about John, uh, check out the last three Star Trek movies um, from starting from 2009 and ending I think in like 2015 or 16 um, was the last one. He was in all of them. He was great in all of them. He was awesome. He played Sulu. When they went into Spike's past, that's when they messed everything up in my opinion because it, I, I think it was too much of a divergence from what we've come to, to know and love about the characters. I think them setting it up where Spike was the calm head named Fearless. That's, that's, that's one of the things that got me too, was them call, not calling him Spike, calling him Fearless. Another name would have been nice, you know, if not Spike Spiegel, something else. But I think someone said in their head, well, we have Vicious, so we should have Fearless. And you know, they could have John Wicked it, you know what I mean? <laughs> it just had like a different name for the dude. His real name would have been nice, or, or like a code name from the syndicate besides Fearless. It just, I don't know, it just didn't resonate with me when they called him Fearless. That was my biggest gripe, was the fact that everything sort of fell apart with the last three episodes. I believe the writing just became less potent with the last three episodes. I think that them going the route of creating this needy, deprived, peon who had no power of his own and was constantly jealous of spike it's i didn't think it was a good idea i thought it i thought it flopped i believe the guy who played vicious uh yeah he was lackluster i don't think he brought 
right vibe for the character. Um, he, I, I don't believe he embodied the character at all. Now, mind you, it's kind of hard to embody a character when the character has such so little screen time. So in total, he was in five episodes. In those five episodes, he was literally on screen maybe a whopping 10 to 15 minutes, if that. So there's, there wasn't a lot to go on with the character of Vicious, admittedly. But I don't think that the actor, Alex Hassel, brought anything to the character. If anything, I, I think he took away from the character of Vicious. But one of the things I did like was the meshing of the characters and the whole family vibe and, and the whole we have to stay together and work together at all costs and have each other's back. I think that's something that was really good. And that's one of the reasons why I liked um, Daniel Pineda's version of Faye because in the original series, Faye really didn't have that vibe to her. She was kind of like a lone wolf. She was kind of just there, you know, on the bebop, you know, taking advantage of the guys, you know, when they had a bounty, she might, or she may or may not let them know that the bounty was there. If she let them know, then, you know, she got her cut and she got to eat for another day. And if she didn't, she went out and got the bounty for herself and then she'd go shopping. That was Faye from, 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 the, from the original series. So Daniela Pineda having like some type of gravitas to the character really added and them having that kind of family dynamic um, really meshed well and really sat well with me. But I think the character Vicious like just kind of like killed a lot of what was really good and then having that depressive backstory for, for Jet and him not like losing his family and you know his, his daughter and calling another guy daddy after he saved her and you know he just had like no luck. And then, you know, he kind of went and blamed Spike for it, and it was kind of Spike's fault. But if he was really a detective like he said he was, and he was really a cop like he said he was, he would have vetted Spike and knew that Spike was from the fucking syndicate. But he didn't do anything like that. And then, he, he you know, Jet came off to me like a person who blames other people for, for his own faults, right? And he's blaming other people for his own bullshit. I did not like the way they portrayed Jet in the last three episodes. I thought it was horrible because of those reasons, right? They had him as this loser. They had him as this person who, you know, was not in character with the original Jet Black. You know, the Jet Black, the original character, was a detective. He was able to solve crimes. He was all able to figure things out. The one thing he didn't figure out, figure out in the original series, they brought it to this series. But you always kind of got the feeling that Jet was smart enough to figure out that Spike was part of the syndicate. If you were going to be Jet Black and you're going to be a former cop, former detective, you know how to be a detective. So if you have a, a possible enemy within your midst, you should know it. The naivete of the Jet Black in the live action series left a, left a bad taste in my mouth. And then finally was Ed, Radical Ed. With the 30 seconds or so, 60 seconds or so, that the current character or the person playing Radical Edward was on screen, she was annoying as hell. I didn't like her. <laughs> Maybe, you know, with, with season two, they'll bring out Radical Edward and, you know, she'll be more in line with the character. I didn't like the fact that they brought her out so late. They brought her out literally in the last episode, in the last five seconds or, you know, the last couple of minutes they brought her out. And she said a couple of things to Spike and then that was it. And it was like, oh. Is it bad? No. I think people who never saw Cowboy Bebop, the original series, if you haven't seen the original series, you might sit down and you might actually enjoy this, you know, because it'll all be new to you, right? But if you are a fan of the original series and you're doing a comparative, and like I said, one of the best things that they did was they brought in enough new content, but they adhered to enough of the old content um, where it wasn't disrespectful, you know, where it was... It was kind of cool. It was it was enough new stuff to make it interesting, but enough old stuff to make it cool. Until they got to like the last episodes, right? Like I, I think it started with the episode that went back into uh, Spike's backstory, Spike's and Vicious's backstory. That that's when it became annoying. That's when it became something that I really didn't enjoy, and I kind of had to struggle through it. But if you never saw the original series, you'd love it. If you saw the original series, you might still love it because there's a lot to like. Or you, if you know, if you don't love it, you might like it because there's a lot to like. Um, if you're gonna like this, you're gonna like it. Like I said, I really did enjoy it for the first six or seven episodes. I thought it was really good up until that one episode, and I was just like, "What the hell just happened?" I don't think it, it deserves like a roasting. It's getting 
um, from a lot of reviewers. Well, so I know a lot of people have negative things to say about it, but like I said, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I there were a lot of good things to enjoy, and, and there was a lot of good things to unpack and see visually. So yeah, I mean, give it a chance, and and you know, there's a lot to like. Like I said, um, and don't listen to me. You know, make make your own decision on whether or not you want to see it, and have that experience for yourself. I think Cowboy Bebop as a series, whether it's the anime or the live action, is an experience that should be experienced. So let yourself give yourself the chance and opportunity to do that, and just experience it for yourself. Don't listen to anybody else. Um, yeah, because that's what I did. You know, I had people who were like, oh, you know, I saw it on already and it's horrible. You know, Phase of Valley Girl and Jet, I, what the, you know, um, what the hell they're doing with Jet and, you know, why do they have Harold in there? Where's Kumar? I kept waiting for Kumar to pop out. How the racist ass was shit through was saying, you know? Um, a lot of people would hate him because Jet was black and I was just like, and? You know? So what? You know, you fucking face Latina you're not fucking getting up her ass so that's it you know enjoy it that's my rant so until next time stay peaceful stay loving and stay blessed